All right, guys, this is going to be your Unit 8 test corrections. So taking a look at number one, it says which square root has a value between 13.8 and 14.5? All you have to do is go in the calculator, and on each one of these, you want to get the square root and see which one matches best. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down some of the answers that I got on this part. So for 190, I got 13.78. For 200, I got 14.14. Pardon my phone in the background. For C, I got 14.59. And then let's see what I get on 220. Give me a second. I got 14.83. So you are trying to figure out which one of those is between that 13.8 and that 14.5. I'm gonna let you guys figure out the answer on your own. So now on to number two. It says right triangle ABC is shown below. Which value is the best approximation for the length of the hypotenuse? Well, from A to C, this is your hypotenuse right here. They already tell you that the answer is the square root of eight. There's really nothing to solve for on it. All you have to do is take the square root of eight. So give me a second. So I'm gonna do square root of eight in my calculator and I get two point a, this rounds up to 2.83. So again, you're on your own for getting the answer on this one. On number three, it says a model of the Pythagorean theorem is shown below. Based on the information in the model, which equation represents the Pythagorean theorem? So on these, you're going to have to take the square roots of each one of the ones that they give you. So because they say square units, that's the area of this entire square right here. Okay, But all we want is this length right here. So if it's 169 square units, this side length, when I take the square root of 169, is 13. Same thing on these others. Square 144 square units, well, that means this side is just 12. 25 square units, this side is just 5. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I, don't, I haven't even looked at the answers yet, but for my sake, I'm going to call this side a, I'm going to call this side b, I'm going to call this side C, and I'm going to start plugging in numbers. So A is going to be 5 squared, B is going to be 12 squared, and C ends up being 13 squared. So what you are going to try to do is you're going to try to figure out between A, B, C, and D which one matches best. So you try to figure out which one matches this thing right here, okay? Number four, on some days, Jordan travels from home uh, directly to his work. So from home, to work, traveling directly there. This is going to be side C if you hadn't figured that out yet. On other days, Jarden visits with his friend on his way to work, which means that he has to go from home to his friend's house to work. So approximately how much farther would Jarden have to travel by walking uh, from his home to his friend's house and then from his friend's house to work than he would by, traveling, by walking from directly home to work, okay? So we've got to solve for side C first. So again, we're going to use the A squared plus B squared equals c squared. Uh, I'm going to call this a, I'm going to call this b, there's not really any rhyme or reason to it. So in the calculator, just to get c, I can do 120 squared plus 240 squared. Okay. When you type that in the calculator, you get, one second, this comes out to about 268. Okay. But again, this only matches, so again, this is side c, this right here is side C. We need to figure out the total length that he has to go if he goes from, his, uh, from home to friend's house to work. Well, what I'm going to end up doing is I've got to add the 240 yards plus the 120 yards. So I'm going to add those up. So he'd have to walk 360 yards if he went from home to friend's house to work. But we want to know how much he saves by going directly to work. So this is the part that you guys are going to have to take care of. Figure this out. That's going to be enough to get your answer. On number five says, which side measurement represents the side lengths of a right triangle? So on this one, each one of the longest sides is going to be side C. My recommendation is to use the A squared plus B squared equals C squared and just solve for side C like you usually do. So on number one, what I would do is I would do the square root of 6 squared plus 2.5 squared. On B, square root of 4.5 squared plus 3 squared. On C, square root, 7 squared plus 4 squared. And then on D, square root of, you probably know what I'm doing by now, equals, all right, so each one of these is supposed to give you side C. 
So you're gonna have to go through, work each one of these out, and figure out which one matches either that part, that part, that part, or that part. All right, on number six, this is an apartment complex. Stretch a string of decorative floats diagonally across the pool as shown below. I don't know who would do that across the pool because that's pretty dumb. But anyways, uh, and so this is gonna end up being our side C, okay? And if this is 15, that means that over here also has to be 15. So again, this is just Pythagorean theorem. So it says, what is the length of the string of floats? So we'll call this side A, we'll call this side B. We're solving for C, so as usual, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I've got 15 squared plus 20 squared. And what we're solving for is side C. So you've got to take the square root. Ooh, pardon the bad handwriting as usual. That's going to be my side C. So work that out and figure it out from there. All right, on number seven, says triangle ABC is graphed on the coordinate plane below. What is the approximate length of AB in units? So we're going from here to here. This is going to be our side C. We've got to find out A and B first. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I've got to count these side lengths because what we need is we've got to go count that side and we've got to count that side. So I'm going to count up this side. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five places. This side over here is going to be one, two. So I'm going to write in my numbers real quick. So this is two over here and the other one I said was five. We're going to call this, uh, this will be A right here and this will be B. doesn't really matter which one you call which, but I'm just going to do it that way. So as usual, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I'm going to plug in my A and my B, and I've got to take the square root of that to get whatever length of C is. So work that out on your own, figure it out from there. Another pretty straightforward one says triangle ABC is graphed on the coordinate grid below. What is the length of the segment AB? So AB, just like the last one. So we're going this is going to be side C over here, and we've got to find our other lengths. So we're going to call this, let's see, this will be side A. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this side is 8. This is going to be A. And now I'm going to do the other side. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3. Oh, I want to use the highlighter. 1, 2. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so side B is going to be fifteen in length. So just to get fancy with the colors, I've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared is going to be eight squared plus. Now I've got my green for fifteen squared, and then. We just take the square root to find out what C is. So work that out on your own. Figure it out. On number nine, it says, in the diagram, lines L and M are parallel. Line N is a transversal that creates eight angles uh, with parallel lines. Based on the diagram, which statement is true? Before we even go into that, I always like to highlight which sides are going to be the same. So two and three are directly across from each other. So they have to be the same thing. While on the bottom, it's going to be the exact same pattern. So six and seven have to be the same. Now I'm going to do a different color up here. 1 and 4 have to be the same. 5 and 8 have to be the same. Okay? Oh, and we've talked about supplementary and complementary before. If the two add up together to create 180, it's supplementary. If they add up together to create 90, it's going to be complementary. So we're going to answer choice A. It says angle 4 and 8 are the same thing. Well, 4 and 8 are both red. So 4, 8, both red. That looks good. And then angle 5 is another red one. It says it's equal to angle 2. Well, those are two different colors. That doesn't work. So A is already out. On B, it says angle 4 and 8. Well, both of those are reds. Say that they're the same thing. That's good so far. Angle 5 is also a red, uh, but angle 7 is a blue. So that's, again, not going to work out for us. On C, it says angle 4 and 8. 4 and 8, still red. Angle 6 and 8. Well, 6 and 8... Oh, I'm sorry, it says angle 6 and 8 are supplementary, okay? So I can look at that by doing this. So here's 6 and 8. Well, if they make a flat line right here, they have to add up to 180 degrees. That sounds pretty good. So angle 4 and 6, so where's 4 and 6? Uh, so angle 4 and 6 also. So if here's how I'm going to put this. If I've got a red color and I've got a blue color, the way I've got these, added, uh, way these set up, those have to add up to 180 degrees, okay? So C sounds pretty good, but I'm going to double check D just in case. So it says uh, angle 4 and 3 are complementary. Well, 4 and 3 are both, <laughs> we just said, 
Remember, uh, complementary means that they have to add up to 90. Supplementary means they have to add up to 80. Well, what we just wrote up here keeps D from working for us. So answer should be pretty straightforward for you. On number 10, I practically handed you the answer on this one before the test, so hopefully you didn't miss it. But uh, A and B have to be the same value as C. When those two add up together, they're going to equal the value of the exterior angle. So you just got to read through these and see which one matches best. So just for a little bit of clarification on this, I'm going to tell you that angle A plus angle B is going to be the same thing as angle C in this case. Okay, They have to be equal to each other. So I'm going to go through and highlight a couple of words. Uh, let's see, that one says equal. Some of the measures is always 180. Well, that may be true, but that's not what we're looking for. Uh, and this one says less than, and this other one says always 360. That's not really what we're looking for on that one. So again, angle A, angle B together have to equal angle C. Figure out which one that is. Number 11 says find the angle, uh, sorry, find the measure of angle four if angle two is 40 degrees. So again, I know this is really blurry, but I'm going to go through and highlight everything that's the same first. So here's uh, I think that's an 8. It's really hard to see on here. Angle 8 and 2 are the same. Angle 6 and 4 are the same. 1 and 7 are the same. 3 and 5 are the same. So they're telling us that angle 2 is 40. So I'm going to kind of write that in here just so we don't lose track of it. So that's 40. And then angle, uh, we're trying to find out angle 4. Well, they're both blue. So if that's blue and that's blue, they have to be the same value. That's more than enough to get your answer. This is another one that I kind of talked about before. If these two angles match and these two angles match, that means that this angle and that angle also have to match, which means that these triangles have to be similar. And the actual question says, based on the given information in the triangles, determine if triangle ABC is similar to triangle EFD. Well, I just told you that they're similar. So I'm going to go through these. This one says not similar. This one says not similar. That's probably not going to do you any good. This one says similar. This one says similar. So you know you've got it down to at least two answers on here. But I want to point out on G, it says their interior angles add up to 180 degrees. That has nothing to do with being similar. All triangles' interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So that one won't do you any good. So figure it out from there. Number 13 says in, uh, in each diagram, line R is parallel to line S, and line T intersects lines R and S. This is really just an example, which really has nothing to do with the problem that we're about to do. So it says, based on the given diagrams, which statement about the value of X in the diagram below is true? Well, again, I'm going to just do what we've been doing. That thing, that thing have to be the same, which means that thing and that thing have to be the same, which means all of these are also the same, where I just put the green dots, okay? which means we know what the value of x has to be. So I'm gonna, we're just going to start with that part. So A says x is 32. Decide yourself if that makes sense. On B, it says the value of each x is 160. Think about it. On C, it says the value of each x is 148. That sounds pretty darn good. And then D says the value of x cannot be determined from the given pattern. Well, we know darn well that we can absolutely. In fact, I'm going to mark that one out because even those that aren't paying attention don't deserve to pick D on accident. So figure it out from there, guys. And on number 14 says, which number line shows a point that best represents the value of square root of 215? So in the calculator, if you were to type this out, you get, this comes out to around 14.66. Okay. And I want you to think about this one like money. If 14.50 is like halfway between $14 and $15, 14.66 has to be a little over halfway. So you know your answer has to be somewhere between 14 and 15. So 14, 15, 14, 15. Unfortunately, all these fall, uh, fall somewhere between 14 and 15, but actually only G and H show it actually being in the middle, uh, sorry, in between 14 and 15. Keep in mind, this has to be over halfway. So that's enough to get your answer from there.